it's Violet here with True Crime and Art. I've been gone for a little bit, but it's October. October is like one of my favorite months, and um, I've been busy doing all the fun fall things. Uh, I actually even went to Disney World with some girlfriends, so that was amazing. Um, then I came back with a scratch cornea, so you can't really paint and talk to people or read notes. <laughs> with a scratch cornea. And if you haven't had one before, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. It kind of stinks. Anywho, moving on. This episode is kind of Halloween-y, um, just because this person creeps me out. You guys know that I am doing uh, female stories right now, just because I find them fascinating. And the one we are doing today is the story of Countess Elizabeth Bathory who uh, was a serial killer from the 1600s. So buckle up, buttercups. Um, now, before we go any further, just letting you know, I am gonna mention um, what Elizabeth did to her victims. I'm not gonna go in crazy detail, but just to give you the idea of the story. So if you are squeamish, um, you can listen, maybe fast forward through the torture parts, but it, it might not be for the uh, squeamish folks out there, okay? So, all right. Oh. <laughs> I should also explain my campus. Um, one, I'm trying to recycle canvases. And two, I decided I don't like taking up so much time and doing the background with you guys. So I kind of restarted this for you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so Elizabeth Bathory was born in Hungary in the 1600s. It's 1601. And she was born into a super, super wealthy family. Um, like from everything that I read, they were like the Kardashians of the day. Uh, and keep in mind that Hungary had just gone through a horrible war. The aristocracy, it was basically like peasants against the aristocracy. And Elizabeth's family was part of the aristocracy, okay? So they had this like ironclad grip on the peasants, okay? So that's kind of something to keep in mind as we talk about this story. Elizabeth was born to a super wealthy aristocratic family. She had lots of siblings. Um, her dad was like second in charge to the king. I mean, like up there. Her cousin was the king. Um, Elizabeth's parents were first cousins. And so it's said that because of that, because of that inbreeding, um, their children had lots of health issues. And Elizabeth herself actually suffered from epilepsy. Now, I am not saying that everybody with epilepsy is uh, inbred because my daughter has epilepsy and I can promise you she's not inbred. Now, one of the ways that people back in the day would treat epilepsy was to take the blood of a non-epileptic, you would think I could say this word better, a non-epileptic person who doesn't have epilepsy and rub it on the lips of the person who does have epilepsy. Uh, there were some treatments that even you would drink the blood uh, out of the skull of the non-sufferer. So Elizabeth is being treated for epilepsy with blood rubbing on her lips from a very young age, okay? So she's introduced to things at a very young age. Now, it was also said that her parents were cruel to their servants. So Elizabeth always saw um, beatings happening with the servants. And the majority of girls would be like, oh, no, no, thank you. Well, Elizabeth, uh, that was kind of her thing. She liked it. She liked to watch. So now at the age of 10, Elizabeth is betrothed to a Hungarian count. This count's name was F Frederick Nadazdi. I'm pretty sure I got that. She was 10, he was 15. Now, she was old enough to get betrothed, but she couldn't quite marry yet. So Elizabeth went to, to go live with Frederick's family because that's kind of customary what happens. Because Elizabeth, once they got married, would take over essentially his estate and running the affairs. So Elizabeth is living at Frederick Nadasdi's house, I should say castle, and Elizabeth becomes pregnant at the age of 13 before her and Frederick are married. Okay, all right, they're betrothed, she is 13, yikes. Guys, she's not, um, she does, the baby's father is not Frederick. it's actually a, <laughs> I'm, I don't know why I laugh, I'm uncomfortable. Um, it's actually a serving boy in the family household. So uh, Elizabeth gives birth to the baby. They give the baby to um, a trusted person of the family. And Frederick has the servant boy castrated and then thrown to a pack of wolves. 
So he's not like cool as a cucumber about it. Let me add a couple things because I got to pay attention to a couple things and then I can just, it'll be fine. Um, oh, that, <laughs> that looks like something, doesn't it? Okay, I gotta fix that. I'm gonna add some back color. Now, if you guys have painted before or kind of getting into painting, keep in mind it's a process. It's gonna look better. I'm laying down the back color so I can have some shadow. So just trust the process. And guys, even if your painting doesn't come out right or good, who cares? Have fun with it, right? So let's talk about Elizabeth and her future husband. Once they get married, and their wedding is supposed to be, it's this ginormous party, okay? They had 4,500 guests. Um, it, it was huge. And they were both very powerful families. So whenever they combined, they were almost more powerful than the king. So that was kind of a big deal to keep in mind. I'm sorry, my dog is barking. Now, once they get married, Frederick uh, gives his new 14-year-old bride a castle as her wedding gift. So my husband just gave me an engagement ring and then a wedding band, so I'm going to have to talk to him about that one. Uh, they move into this castle that, interesting and interestingly enough, is pretty dark and creepy looking. Uh, still to this day, it's pretty dark and creepy looking, so maybe that was their vibe. I don't know. Frederick knew that Elizabeth was uh, a little bit into the kind of shady ugh, torture stuff. She liked to beat the, the servants. So he had a room built for Elizabeth in the basement for her to use, okay, to her specifications. And Frederick would teach Elizabeth how to best um, punish or reprimand their servants. Uh, he taught her some some things. So he wasn't like super innocent about this. Okay. So let's not think Fe Frederick was like the nicest guy in the world. No, no. Speaking of Frederick, about three years after they were married, he became the chief commander of the Hungarian forces. And so whenever he would go out to battle, um, he really, really liked Vlad the Impaler. He was kind of a, I don't know, he wanted to be like him. So Frederick was known for taking his victims and impaling them on a stake. So, and he got the name of the Black Knight because he was ruthless, he was vicious, and he was very good at his job. Now, Frederick loved to work because he loved to fight, and he was, by all accounts, downright nasty mean. So he would stay out on the battlefield, and Elizabeth loved it. Because whenever Elizabeth was home alone, it was said that she had boyfriends. Um, we kind of know that she liked, she liked the men, obviously from a, a young age. And so she would have boyfriends when Frederick was away. Um, <laughs> Frederick and Elizabeth had five children. Unfortunately, only three survived. Uh, after going through the story, I'm like, how'd they die? We'll never know. Now, Elizabeth was two sides of a coin because as we'll find out, she was a sadistic murderer. But also she took care of the people in her land because it was up to the, the count and the countess of the different places to be able to take care of their people. So when, during war, during famine, she would always have, let her people come to the castle, get food, get shelter, um, get medicine, whatever they needed. And during the wars, Frederick did so well. He would bring back all these treasures um, and it caused the Bathory family to become extremely wealthy. Uh, for a time, they were wealthier than the Hungarian government. Uh, and in fact, they let the Hungarian government borrow money to help keep the, keep it afloat. Uh, these are all things to keep in mind, okay? You're like, Riley, why didn't you go down on that black part right there? Just trust me. About 25 years into their marriage, uh, Frederick started having this unknown debilitating disease that affected his legs. It caused extreme pain. He couldn't walk. He was pretty much an invalid. And about three or four years into his disease illness, Frederick passed away and they were married for 29 years, which is actually quite a long time, especially for back then. Like people don't even live that long. So Elizabeth becomes the, the person in charge officially of the whole estate, um, the money, all of it. 
Some people didn't like that, one, because she was a woman, and two, because of her bloodline and who she married, uh, they thought she was too powerful, okay? So people didn't really, uh, they're like frenemies. You know how whenever you like, you see someone on Instagram and you're like, I hate that, but I would definitely be her friend? I mean, me either. Anywho, um, people wanted to be in her presence, but they didn't like her. And at this point, after Frederick dies, there starts to become these rumors that servant girls are disappearing. And the clergymen are starting to get worried because they have to go to Elizabeth's house a lot to perform last rites to serving girls who are dying of cholera. Now, I'm sure they were like, is this a cholera outbreak or what's going on? I mean, like a lot of serving girls. Okay, um, and of course, because it's serving girls, nobody's doing a dang thing about it. Now, let's move on, keep going. She's, at this point, I'm just gonna rip off the band-aid. She is torturing serving girls. She is doing all sorts of, sorts of horrific things to them, like um, covering their body in honey, which besides being sticky, not too awful, but then putting them outside in like ant piles to watch them be eaten alive by ants. Let me get a little bit more on here while you digest that one. Oh, that's way too much yellow. What do you guys think? I can still see the background through there. Let's, let's try to hide that a bit, okay? Oh, oh, oh. okay, now we're cooking with gas. Now I wanna darken up these lines a little, so let's see what we can do. I don't know if I love that or hate that. Oh, I kind of like that. I think I hold my breath when I'm painting. Do you guys see my sign? My sister made it for me and I love it. If you can't read it, it says, let's talk about serial killers. Serving girls are going missing. Left, right, and center, okay? Um, their parents are sad, but nothing they can do about it. Yada, yada, yada. Got it? All right. Now, Elizabeth, at this point, gets really bored because what else is a crazy sociopath supposed to do? She gets really bored, so she now offers classes to the local noble people for court etiquette. Now, court etiquette is like, what do you do when a count comes in and a duke comes in? Who do you address first? You know, that sort of thing. I have no idea the answer to that. So the noble people start sending their daughters to Elizabeth's castle to learn court etiquette. Sounds great, right? Well, apparently these folks completely ignored the rumors of those poor servant girls because Elizabeth starts to torture and experiment on the noble, the noble people's daughters. And at this point, the noble people actually start to make a fuss about it. Now, the servants probably were making a fuss too, but nobody cared because, you know, same crap, different day. At this point, the king is... It's kind of twofold. I'm gonna pretend that he's worried about these, these girls who are age like 10 to 14, by the way. But really, I think it's because um, he owed a huge debt to Elizabeth and her estate. So he's like, oh, is she doing something bad? Let's go check her out. So the king sends um, the guy who's in charge of criminal justice, who happens to be Elizabeth's cousin because they're all related, uh, to go check out Elizabeth's home. Now, he drops by Elizabeth's house, and guess what he sees? He catches Elizabeth, this is at least what he writes back, he catches Elizabeth right in the middle of torturing a girl. And then he also finds a dead girl. Not a good look, Elizabeth, not a good look. Um, they arrest Elizabeth, as well as four servants, immediately. Okay, let me finish this because my phallic stem is just not making me happy right now. Give me a second. All right, guys, how does that look? Yes, it doesn't look crazy anymore. Awesome. I am going to do this next part, uh, at least get it blocked out. So give me a second, okay? Oh, that's a bright orange. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna black out at all, is it? Whoa. <laughs> Let me doubt. Make it up, right? You know, there's a lot of brain cells required to do painting and then thinking about the story. All right, so everybody's been arrested, and uh, according to Elizabeth's own diary, she and her servants experimented on and tortured 650 girls. Now, they didn't find 650 bodies. They did find some on-premises, so 
they did find some some dead people. Now, some people would argue that servants naturally died from cholera and they would just bury them on the grounds. So there are some people who actually argue that none of this ever happened. I don't know. It was the 1600s. Who knows? Sure makes for an interesting story, doesn't it? How's that look? Yeah. Oh, that looks so sexy. Let's see. Let's add some white on this side. The pair's doing it for me. I like it. How's that look? That's a good looking pumpkin. That's a sexy pumpkin, huh? Okay, so all four of Elizabeth's servants are arrested along with Elizabeth. And all four servants, well, they were convicted of murder, even though I think two of them only helped like bury bodies. Uh, three of the servants were tortured and then executed. And then a fourth servant was sent for like life in prison. Uh, they escaped. I think it was a, a man, I think it was. Um, they escaped and then since they escaped from prison, they were then executed. Uh, because Elizabeth's family was so uh, influential and well off, they made a deal with the King of Hungary. And the deal was that they would forgive the King of Hungary for his debts to Elizabeth if they did not execute her. So he was like, sweet. So Elizabeth is uh, sentenced to uh, solitary confinement for the rest of her life inside of her castle. Uh, she was put in one of the rooms and the room was, it was a windowless room and it was bricked off with like a little place for ventilation and for food to be slipped through. And she had a bodyguard there 24 seven. Elizabeth only lasted three years in there and she died of natural causes. So I say only lasted, but I don't know if I'd last that long in solitary confinement in a bricked room with no light. Ooh, okay. Anywho, so uh, the main thing, if you Google Elizabeth Bathory, you'll see she bathed in her victim's blood and drank her victim's blood. There are, there are accounts of her drinking her victim's blood, um, but there are no accounts of her bathing in her victim's blood until like a hundred years after she died. So that isn't probably accurate and truthfully in looking into this it does sound like she was a sadistic crazy pants uh but it also sounded like it went very uh conveniently with the king of hungary's need to kind of knock down the bathroom family a little so i don't know what do you guys think do you think she actually killed 650 girls I mean, like, that's a lot. I mean, think about how big the cities were back then. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be an entire city or town or village or something? I, I don't know. How do you not notice that many people missing? Um, even if they are all serving girls. I, <laughs> I don't know. That kind of, I'm like, uh. But to this day, Elizabeth Bathory is listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the most, here I go with words again, prolific female serial, female serial killer. If the Guinness Book of World Records says it's true, it's got to be true, right? All right. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for listening. Um, please don't forget to uh, like. I really love when you guys comment because I'd love to have conversations at the bottom. And truthfully, it helps with the YouTube algorithm because YouTube doesn't seem to love me. <laughs> um, and also subscribe. That way you'll be able to see whenever I post next. I'm going to take a couple weeks off because Halloween is like my Super Bowl and I have things I need to do. Uh, Halloween's followed by my anniversary and my daughter's birthday. So it's going to be probably mid-November. Until then, I'll try to post some funny things on the Facebook page. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, and don't forget, above all, be kind to one another. Bye. Yeah, it's looking good, looking good in the neighborhood. Sandy! Stupid dog. Oh, what did I just do?